Amen. Amen. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the noon time. Praise Him.
God has made for me. Amen. And you just clap your hands and thank God. Amen. And say that God, thank you so much because I'm still breathing. Amen. So many people they have gone, but I'm still here. Amen. And I know that Father, you left me here for a purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So every day, keep on thanking God. Amen. Saying that God, thank you for this new day. Amen. Which you've given me. Hallelujah. Amen.
Father, for your presence. We know that you are already here, Almighty God. We call upon the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We call upon you, Almighty God. Yes, Jesus. Father, we know that your presence is already here, Almighty God. Jesus. That's why we are singing that when you call us, we are going to answer, my Father. Jesus. Father, call us, we will answer, my Father. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Tata, tu le sens, on a fait ma soco. Et là, tu m'as dit, tu 
women live administrator to take their service in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brethren, you must sit down. And, oh, sorry, before you sit down. I want to thank God for this wonderful day. I want to thank God for this wonderful moment. In our midst, we have a guest. Not everybody and now we are going to welcome this guest the way we usually welcome our guests. Okay, three, two, one, let's go. Sister Justin, it has been such a long time, but it's nice to see you. Nice to see you. It's nice to see that COVID didn't take you. I know we are here, we are still standing, COVID didn't touch us. Uh -huh. It touched Pastor. But it is part of you. Yeah, it's part here. So we are still here. You can go wherever you go and wherever you go and whatever you do, but you will come back and you will find us. Yes, Hallelujah. We are still here. Welcome home. It's a time for testimony. Is there anyone with a testimony? Testimony, testimony time. Hallelujah. Okay. Even Sister Justin, who hasn't been here for long, she's, she hasn't got a testimony. I don't know where your God went, but for me, I thank God because I'm still alive. Thank God for I managed to go through the night last night. Never Zakatona to the Nasabodo Wita Machiroma Chari Mulam. I didn't go to bed until around two o'clock. Tia Tiak is everybody to Sasamana with Baba's own way, you know. But as I was sleeping at around a quarter to five, Baba Deva Yeva said, Only that you can come in at a very sour coming I woke up with this urge to throw up. Thankfully, the room I was sleeping in, there is a sink nearby. I went to the sink. I went to the sink. I went to the sink. And I actually was throwing up, but nothing was coming up. Eventually, I started throwing up something which was as bitter, as bitter as anything you have ever tasted. But I was sleeping. And when I woke up, I had that throwing up. Mm. So, I think I just have to thank the Lord. Because there might have been something which the Lord had to get out of me. Which the Lord had to get out of me. Maybe it would have killed me in my sleep. Maybe it would have killed me in my sleep. I wouldn't have been able to come here today. I would have been so sick. But I give the glory to God. Because I am here today. And I feel well. Amen. That is 
my testimony, Akusu, to me, Eri Yem, I thank God. Yera Nisada, praise God, amen. I feel I'm challenged that we have a church, Ntituine Kanisa, uh, and we are born again, Tuliva Balogole, and we welcome everybody who comes in. And I told her that if you come in our church, you won't find so many people because most of the people are on Facebook because of COVID. But we have a big God. And if you come in our church, you are not going to remain the same. I promise her that. But there is one thing which I, which I want to thank God. She promised me that she will come. She asked me the address and I gave it to her. And I told her that if you are stuck, you give me a call. I will tell my husband, my husband to come and pick you up. Hallelujah. Amen. I give God a glory. I know by the power of God, God will be bringing you maybe every day. Every Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. And you are always welcome every Sunday. I know you live very far. I know she lives but by God's grace, you will manage to come in the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming. I'm very happy. May God bless you and your family. And thank you so much for the flowers. Your sister Zima is a very wonderful lady. Even at work, everybody loves her. Yeah, because she's a very good lady. I didn't, I didn't tell her what to bring. I didn't tell her anything. But as she was coming, she bought these flowers for her for her church. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you. There's nothing we can say. But God is going to set you free. God is going to set you free. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Anyone else with a testimony? Hallelujah. Amen. And Sister Hazel. This Hazel, this morning, when she came at my home, she gave me a very good testimony. Um, what the testimony that she, uh, she went to emergency. Her leg was swollen. She couldn't walk properly. Even she was worried that maybe she won't manage to come here. But we want to thank God. She's okay now. She can walk. She can walk. She can dance. Amen. She can sing. Amen. She can sing. Amen. We thank God for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I think uh, uh, let us as we are waiting for our pastor because he's going to give us the word of God today uh, he's there coming can you clap your hands as he's coming that is our pastor Pastor Daniel Musoke. Clap your hands as he's coming Amen. Hallelujah Amen. our pastor we love you I don't love you as my husband but I love you as my pastor yeah, when we are outside I love you as my husband but for now I love you as my pastor thank you so much for pastoring us 
It's not a very easy job. It's, it's very challenging. But we want to thank God that you are still standing. And you are standing still. We give all the glory to God. And I'm so happy for our firstborn. Sister Kamukama. Sister Anna. Yeah. Mm. Sister Kamukama. Mm. I'm so happy to see you. I always call her our firstborn. Because I have reasons. I have so many reasons. When we are starting this church, she was and they have gone. But for her, when she's not here, she's at work. So we want to thank God that when she comes back from work, that she, she comes back home. So you are welcome home. May God bless you. God for the testimony today because our pastor said he also has a, a testimony but he's not giving us his testimony now but he will give us the testimony Later. in the middle of the service okay. now let's clap our hands welcoming our pastor on the pulpit hallelujah amen blessed be the name of the Lord thank you very much Miss Peter. thank you very much my wife Hallelujah. I just want to inform uh, the Facebook people that you are welcome and I'll be singing uh, after the service in Jesus' name. I'll be singing one of my songs so don't miss. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Loves to sing. Sister Ziva, you may get seated. Uh, can you please administrator sit over there and I want you to feel this place before you go anywhere. Let us all go to this side and we feel, we comfort my, our visitor, the angel of today, Amen. Sister Ziva. The Bible says, never stop welcoming people. Among them, you welcome angels. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Without knowing. Hallelujah. So we must might have an angel in our midst tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us all move to this side, please. All the powers now belong to me right now. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. I salute you once again in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And I want to welcome Sister Ziva in the warmly way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are most welcome, Sister Ziva. Amen. Feel at peace. You are in the house of the Lord. The Bible says that I was so glad when I was told to go in the house of the Lord. The reason why King David was saying this because in the house of the Lord is where you can pour your heart. It's where you can tell the secret and you don't hear it anywhere. In the house of the Lord is where you can get the recipe. It's where you can find the comfort. It's where you feel redeemed. Amen. Amen. In the house of the Lord is the healing place. Amen. 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 And above all, you've come to the master of healers and he heals even the broken hearted. Amen. Nobody under this planet can heal the broken hearted apart from him. Amen. And we don't know even how the heart is broken. Because it has no bones. But within that situation, God holds it. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. 
All right. Uh, my name is Pastor Daniel Musoke, the husband to the most prettiest woman under the planet. Amen. Mrs. Josephine Namakula Musoke. Amen. Hallelujah. And above all, we are married and we are of different sex. Amen. So we didn't get married to lady and I'm lady, a man to a man. But the way how God commanded us. Hallelujah. And we are not scared of saying that because God is with us. Amen. Remember the message that we had last week? Um, last week we are sharing about the relationship between you and God. God doesn't need anything other than building the relationship. And the, in the relationship, there is what we call communication. Amen? Amen? If the communication is not there, the relationship is doubted. Without it, is this really a true relationship? How can be related to someone and you don't communicate? Amen? Amen? So, we are building, we are learning how to build the relationship with, between us and God. Because in Him, we feel comfortable, secure. We feel at home. Amen? We feel like we are somebody. We feel that, yes, we are well protected. But when God disappears, when God runs away from you, then you will see what will come next. Because the Bible says, so without God, the wolves will eat us. Without God, we shall, be, we shall perish. Without God, we cannot live. So our relationship with, between us and God should be really, really strong. Let us humble our souls and we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you very much indeed for this special day. I call it a special day because that is the day that you've given me to minister unto your people, to speak to your people. This is the day that you've given me to speak when I'm still alive. The dead cannot speak. But I can speak because of you. And in you, I'm still alive. And in you, I'm going to manage, to manifest the word that you've given unto me, that you've imparted in me, and is going to give life to your people. May you please open up their ears so that they can hear your voice. Take away my personality and it drown in me. May you please use me as a base to reach to your people. Open up their ears and their eyes and they see as the, the, the prophet Elijah says to Elisha, that Lord open up this man's eyes so that he may see that the one on our sides are greater than those who have attacked us. Let them see that the angels and the heaven is on our side, is for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take away all the diversions, the problems. Misunderstandings we came with, them with them. in Jesus' name. Name of pride. Amen. May the Holy Spirit grow in our ministry and do the greater work in Jesus' name. Name of pride. And also say amen. amen. Can you please say hi to your neighbor for me? Hi. Hi. Ask that person, where have you been for that long? Ask him for me or ask her for me. Where have you been 
that for that long. Hallelujah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a very, very terrible moment. We are in a very difficult situation. We are living in the world that is mixed up with a lot of stuff. Many things are moving around. And the enemy is working 24-7 to make sure that he kills fought a good fight and accomplished the battle. As we are moving in this world, we are in the battle. We are fighting with, us, with the enemy. And the enemy is Satan. He's working day and night. He doesn't want to see you living a better life. He doesn't want to see you saying that Jesus is great. He doesn't want to see you smiling. He wants to see you crying. He wants to see you distressed. He wants to see you living a misery life. But here is a greater God that came to save you and me. To give you a peace of mind. To heal you. To redeem you. To rescue whatever the devil has stolen from you. Hallelujah. That's why we've got to build our relationship on the rock of angels. And the rock is Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 16 that the Lord is so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish. But they have internal life. So it took God to give in his only begotten son. The son that he loved. The son that was there from the beginning. The son who was closer to him. Moving, discussing heavenly stuff. And he gave him for us. To be saved. So God is love took a great portion of giving in his son. It is not easy. Nobody among us could give in his son or his daughter than go and die for someone. Go and die for me. Let them sacrifice you and slaughter off your head because I want to survive. It's not easy. But God loved us so much. I don't know whether you sometimes you think, you sit down and think about that love. It's, uh, it's that's what we call it, we, that's why we call it agape love. It is, it has, it is that called, it, it has no conditions. God loved us the way we are. We sin there at night, but he always calls us back. My children, come back. Come and reason together. That's why wherever you do God is work, whether you are crazy, serious, and delicate, don't give any chance to the enemy or to any friend to divert you when you are doing God is work. Amen. So, how is your relationship between you and God? How do you feel? When you are at work, when you are walking on the way, when you are in your bed, what is your relationship between you and God? Do you still hear his voice? Is God still talking to you? Or you ran away from him? Do you still hear his calling you back? My daughter, come back. My daughter, could you please come back? Last time I told you, 
we have two groups of people in the church. In the church, we have followers. Those who are following, those who are Everything unto God, and they say, Without God, I'm nothing. So, you should try to categorize yourself in which category are you? In which category are you? I told you last week that our relationship reached the level between me and my wife that even that when She's not at all. Even if she's at all, she could be somewhere and I hear her voice. Mr. Masoki. What does it reflect to you? What does it reflect to you? It reflects that there is a very big connection. why I came to realize in the places where we do our works if the lady passes on the man passes on if this one if the husband, the, the husband dies even if the wife is still okay, she dies and I was like what's going on? why it happens like that? because of the bond the relationship How do you feel your relationship with God? Do you love God heartedly? Or you love God because someone is, is pulling you, you know, I go to church because of so and so. I go to church because there is something. I go to church because I'm going to associate with the people. Or you come to church to seek God. My Bible says, when two or three people gather together purposely for God, the Holy Spirit draws in their midst. That's why I would have stayed home. But because of that, I cannot pray and I reach the level of calling the Holy Spirit to come back, to come down to me because I'm alone. The principle is when two or three gather together the Holy Spirit dwells in their midst. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we are building a relationship between us and God. The Bible says in Matthew, which chapter? I think chapter 6. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and the rest shall be added unto you. There is some stuff we are looking for, yet we are not supposed to do. You just seek God and the rest start following you. That is the relationship. That is the true love between you and God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to hear a, a loud voice of amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Um, we are going in Isaiah chapter 30. And verses 15. Chapter 30. Those on, in, on Facebook. Isaiah. In English. Isaiah. Chapter 30. And verses. Um, da, da, da. Pastor Charles. Could you please go in my in my car and you get you get me a Bible? There is a new Bible. Closer to the chair, chair lady. There is a new Bible. Bring it for me, please. Uh, mommy, are you the one with the keys, please? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you go there, read for me, please. For thus says the Lord, mm. 
the Lord God, mm. the Holy One of Israel, mm. in returning and rest, and in returning and rest shall you be saved in in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and you and you would know, and you would not. Sixteen. Yeah. But you said, No, for we will f flee upon on horses, therefore shall you flee, and we will ride upon the, the swift, therefore shall they that pursue you be with the swift. Amen. I want you to read again 15, verses 15. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, mm. in returning and, and rest shall you be saved. In now, we have to be confident. Many things are scaring us. Many things are troubling us. In this situation, there was a battle going on. Isaiah was facing a very big challenge. But listen, in this situation, he looked unto the Lord and said, Lord, what should I do? Lord, what should I do? Do you ask God for the guidance? Or you do according to your will? Hello? Do you ask for guidance? When you are going to do anything, or you do according to your will. When I'm going to do something, in most cases, I consult my wife and I ask her, my wife, can I do this? Not because I cannot make a decision by myself, but because of that relationship, that bond. That bond should be in between us and God as well. It shouldn't be between married people, but God first. In everything, when you are walking, when you are going to sleep, when you are in deep sleep, sleep in God's presence. When my wife is going to sleep, when I'm not at work, she calls me, are you okay? Did you reach well? But what is she looking for? She's looking for the bond, for the comfort, to sleep in that presence, that even if my husband is on there. Yes. Let us build that bond. Amen. To see the bond here. Oh, the gift that I wanted to give to my visitor is here. So many. Thank you for visiting us. That is the best the, the gift I've given you. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us build that bond, that relationship. Amen. When I say I faced a very big challenge, he cried unto the Lord. And thereafter, he did get the, the answer immediately. But he waited and he kept silence. Sometimes we need, after praying, you need that total silence. And you listen to what the Holy Spirit is talking to you. The human being is created in such a way that God speaks to us every single day. Let me say it again. When God created Adam, Early in the morning, he used to come to him and say, Hello, Adam. Are you okay? How was your night? I was there thinking about you. Uh, do you lack anything? No, Father. I'm okay. Good. Today, do this and this and this and this. And he goes up. In the afternoon, he comes back. Hello, my son, David. You are in my image. And in my image, we created you. You are in our, in our ways. 
Hallelujah. God talks to us every now and then. He doesn't speak to us once. But do you still hear God's voice? Amen. So when you don't hear that voice, that means there is a problem between you and, uh, and God is coming in relationship. There is a problem which should be sorted out soon. It's not too late. It is not too late. Worry not. Fear not. For God is always there for you. Amen. Amen. He's always there for you. In total silence, he speaks. And he speaks diligently. Quiet and softly. Hallelujah. Amen. Always yearn, fight to see that you get that voice in your life. Otherwise, the world will swallow you. He said, Yakumida. The world will swallow you. When you come from a place of work, speak to him and say, Thank you, Lord. You've managed me to come back. However much I didn't see anyone getting an accident, but maybe I would have got one. But because of your hand and your mercy, which it was forever, you sheltered me with your mercy. You covered me in your wings and you saved me from being attacked. You will feel, you will hear the voice inside you. And when that voice comes, you will start smiling alone. Because God is voice changes things. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. We are building the relationship between us and God. Isaiah just kept quiet after praying, after getting distressed and saying, what can I do? And he kept quiet and said, Lord, what should I do? Things are worsening now. I need your intervention. Amen? Amen. How often do you do that? How often do you do that? Even in a relationship. I'm trying to relate the relationship and God. Because this is how we can come to know God. Amen? Amen. We bring things that are common. So that you may understand God properly. We compare God to an ego. But God is not like ego. But because at least everybody knows an ego. Ego is a beautiful bird. Um, it is the, one of the most beautiful birds. Under the planet. And even the way how God beautified it. The beauty of the feathers. The eyes. It's speech. It's this big. It's really, really so special. Amen? So that's why we compare God on an ego. Because ego is God our white wing. And it's strong when it, it pumps, the pressure is too much, and it makes even the noise. <laughs> and the voice doesn't come from it's big, but it comes from amen. When God is moving, you feel that voice, you feel his movements. Build that relationship. If you don't feel it anymore, there is something which 
is missing. In this situation, whereby the COVID has become the, the talk of the day. It's a song on everybody's lips. COVID, 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 COVID. COVID has covered God. Nobody talks about God. Even the governments, big leaders, strong leaders, kingdoms, they do not talk about God. They don't know that God even can intervene and kills this virus. They think that their wisdom and knowledge can take COVID away. It won't work out like that. And don't talk according to the people of the world. Because you are in the world, but you are not of the world. You are the son of the most high God. And listen to this. Challenges should come to you. People, to call you a victor, you have to overcome some situations. People think that when, when problems come, God is not there. God is not with me. Excuse me. God is there. Even Jesus, when he was about to be crucified, the burden was too much on him. And he says, if possible, this cross will not to be taken away. But not by my will, but because of God's will. Let God's will be done, not my will. According to him, the burden was too much. According to yourself now, the situation that you are going through may be very, very heavy and strong. And you cannot even bear to carry it. But God is going to enable you to carry it and overcome if you build that relationship. Let us kick out fear in our lives. Let me say this to you. Pastor Charles, could you please help us and put this this son here, please? Um, my son can do everything when, he's, when I'm here with him. Because he knows that I'm the fighter. I'm his shield. I'm his protector. I protect him. Amen? He knows. Even the dog. Look at this part, uh, the, the, these dogs you see. When the boss is there, when the owner is there, it can bark at you. <laughs> and do all that stuff and stuff. But when the owner is not there and you hit your leg like this, it will run like that. <laughs> now, the situation that you see today, you might see it. It is a shouting. It looks like it's stronger than you. But when the boss is there, fear not. Amen. Fear not. Just stay strong. No situation can intimidate me. No. No situation can intimidate me. Even if you tell me that you are going to be slaughtered off your head, I'm telling you, I swear in the name of the Lord, nobody can intimidate me. I will put my head there, chop it off, and I can admit my, my reward. Mm. When I die, I'm going to get my reward. When I stay alive, the heaven benefits because I will keep on preaching the word of God. Amen. Don't fear any notion. Don't fear anything because God is there for you. But the problem is you are not sure how your relationship is. You are not so sure whether the relationship between you and God is still existing. That's why you are scared. Amen. You will not fear. Even if they say something that you fear to hear, you will just say, okay, it has happened, but God is in control. Thank you, Lord, because I know you are. You are more than conquered. Amen? He overcame. 
you have to overcome. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus overcame the grave. He overcame the death. And he came out with the keys. Amen. Now in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7, you are given all powers to, to pray. You can lose, you can lock. Amen. You can receive, you can refuse. You can do anything. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Whatever you pray shall be granted unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever you pray shall be granted unto you. The powers belongs to you. As long as the relationship is strong. But where comes the problem is here. We forget. We always forget to unite with God and to build the relationship between us and God. And the situation in the world takes us. In the church, you just come once in a while where you feel like, but you don't want to miss your shift. But the shift one day one time will end. And what excuse will you give to God? And you say, you know what, last time I did come to you, I didn't feed my soul because I was at work. Where is the work? It's nowhere. But everything that you do in God's presence, it goes in the records. Yeah, she has come. She has done this. Every good thing you do, the, the reward is before God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The only way how we can build the relationship is by Trying to fellowship every single time that you get. Your soul doesn't eat food, the normal food. It eats the word of God. The today, why am I saying that nothing can scare me? Because my soul is fed, is strong, is full, is well equipped. Amen. Somebody who has eaten food well is looking for somebody where to waste the energy. That's why you find those young boys because they, they have nothing to do. You find them you find them fighting. You find them boxing air because they are full. You have to be full and you fight the enemy. You cannot fight the enemy when you are weak. Amen. Amen. What gives you strength? The word of God. How many scriptures do you have within you? If they close the Bible like this, bam, okay, give us 20 scriptures. Ah, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, those pastors, they know the, the scriptures, you know, they spend most of the time in the scriptures. But for me, you know, I'm just a sheep. I'm just a member of the church, you know. Those administrators, they, they can give you, but for me, um, you know, you know, you know me. <laughs> you know those pastors, they pray for us. See, they pray for us. Amen? Amen. But one day, one time, pastor is not going to be there. And even in your dreams, when the enemy attacks you, the pastor is not in there. You have to be covered. Sometimes why the problem is calm and you feel that they are very strong because you are not well equipped. Let us be equipped with the word of God. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. In Uganda, my language, let me tell you what you are doing. Essentially, Second Timothy, chapter two. Uh, Second Timothy, chapter two, and verses twenty-four and twenty-five. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but the gentle and all men 
apt to to teach patients. Hmm? Repeat again. And the servant of the Lord. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. May not strive. You are not supposed to strive. You are not. You are not supposed to struggle. Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty-four to twenty-five. Why are you striving? Why are you straining yourself? The servant of the Lord just calls upon the name of the Lord and says, Lord, come and help me. And the Bible says, just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You just stand and see the salvation of the Lord. In every situation, in every problem, you don't need to put in much effort. The son of the Lord is not supposed to do that. Don't put there much effort. Just call and to the name of the Father and we say, Lord, I want to thank you indeed. You are my God. You are my comforter. You are my redeemer. You reign forever. And you see how he fights. That's the story I've given you. That when the son is here and he, he can provoke you, he can do all that because he knows that you cannot beat him when I'm just watching. I will try to protect him. Even if he's done, he's wrong. Even if he's wrong, I cannot allow you to come and beat him. Try me. You will see what my daddy will see. Tell that your, your situation as well. Situation I know. You feel so strong, but God will put you down. And you move on. Don't strive. Don't stress yourself. Move with that boldness. The situation should come, but they will, should, they, they will not overcome. They will not intimidate me. They will not put me down. They will do nothing to me. Hallelujah. Because my God is my side. He reigns forever. He overcame. I am an overcomer. Amen. Amen. Feel strong. When the soldier is holding a gun, he's not scared of anyone. Your gun is the word of God. When you build the relationship between you and God, you will know the value of the word of God. You will come to know the strength in the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let people judge you. Allow them to judge you. Give them time to tell you what you want. Those people are your mirror. They will see you and decide and say, okay, okay, Ziva, honestly, Ziva is a Christian. When I look at you, you don't say anything. You are just quiet. You are sitting there. You are doing your own stuff. But they will start judging you. But that lady is a Christian. Is a born again Christian. Honestly, last time I did this and she was just laughing. And she said to me, don't you worry. She was holding a cup of tea. And I hit that the tea was down. But she was just like and saying, oh, sorry. And instead of me saying sorry, she was the one saying to me, sorry. Honestly, this is the land of God. They will start categorizing you. They will see your relationship and you don't feel anything because you are happy. You know that everything, everything happens for the reason. Amen? Amen? Everything happens for the reason. If you come to a relationship between you and God, you will learn how to value the valuable things and to leave unvaluable things to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a certain friend of mine. He always tells me this. Pastor, Pastor Daniel, why are you so scared of death? Everybody is, is scared of death. But you, you are confident. When you're talking about death, you are like, even if you go now, and I said, because I know that God is with me. And whatever I'm doing is benefiting the kingdom of God. So I don't have any support. I feel that I'm, I'm okay. I'm ready. Always be ready to go 
any, any time, any minute. How long have I lived in this planet? Over now 50 years. When will I get tired of it? It is now time for the Bible says my citizenship is in God. I mean, it is in heaven. If my citizenship is in heaven, why am I scared to go back where my citizenship is? Amen? Amen. That's what we don't know. Now, what am I going to what am I trying to tell you? That the, the relationship will push you to do what do other people feel. Amen? Amen. I was scared of putting off my clothes before you guys. Because of my relationship. My, my relationship is limited. But with my wife, I can put off everything. Because of the relationship. With God, be with that confidence that you can put everything off. All spiritual things, you put them off. But you feel you limit God. You limit God. Oh, you know, uh, there are some stuff God can manage, others can. He cannot manage them and try them somewhere else. Amen? The Bible says our rest comes from heaven. Our comfort comes from heaven. Before you cry your problem to any person, report it to the greater God. I'll say, Father, here am I. Look at this big problem I'm facing, Father. I cannot even manage to lift it. Because of the relationship, He will not even take two minutes to come and rescue you from that situation. And in your physical eye, you will continue to see that problem. But spiritually, it will be gone. Amen? In the spiritual life, in the spiritual realm, it will not be there because of the relationship. And when that problem is gone, even if you sit there now, you will be happy. You will say, nothing can, can make me feel. For God is with me. I don't fight for myself. It's God. My power is in God. That is what we call the relationship. My wife is working and working. Amen? But there are some stuff she tells me without fear of heaven. Say, that you have to buy the food. And I say, okay. She knows that I have to do it. Amen? To protect you. To stand there for you. She would have said, no, I'm working. Um, even my wife, my husband is working, but I'm going to buy the food. If she does it, she's fighting her battle. She's taking my responsibility. In most cases, we want to take away God's responsibility. Because we are not sure of our relationship. The Bible says, when, we, when you draw in me, I will draw in you. God wants our commitment. How committed are you? What do you take as the most valuable thing in your life? What do you take to be more valuable? First should be God. The Bible says in Him we live. In Him we walk. In Him we are being. That means if we, he says, excuse me, okay, let me leave you. Life will become very hard. Amen? Mm -hmm. As I'm concluding now, 1 John chapter 8, chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4 and verses 8. We read one verse. We didn't read the verse. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted the, the main issue was in verses 2. Uh, yeah, when you go back home, because of the limited time that we're having, you can read and you get more. Okay. Amen? First, four. First John chapter 4, verse 2. 
from verses 8, and I finish from there. You can just look at First John, chapter four. First John, chapter four, verses eight. He that loves not. That loves not, knows not God. For Listen. God is love. Our God is love. If you don't know how to love, you don't know God. Can I repeat it again? If you don't know how to love, you don't know God. If you don't know how to love, you don't know God. Because our God is love. Our God is love. For God loved the world and He gave. That is one significant of love. God loved us and He gave. Love gives. That's why. I love the sister Ziva and I say, Lord, look at your servant. She has a business. How can I please her? And I say, nothing I can give her and she get pleased. Let me give her the greatest weapon, the word of God. Amen. Amen. If I give her the money, it will perish. It will get finished. Mm. She will use it and get finished. Mm. But she will not finish the word of God. Mm. And she will die and she will leave the word of God with, the, somebody with somebody else. Whether with a child or with someone else. Mm. Amen? Amen? So the word of God is the greatest gift that we can give. Mm. That's why God gave us his son. To become, a, to become a living word in us. Amen. 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 Uh -huh. The second, continue. Continue there, please. Mm -hmm. In this was man, manifest, manifested the love of God towards us because the God sent his only begotten son mm. into the world mm. that we might live through him. Ah! We live through him! Amen. In him we live! In him we do all things. Without him you struggle a lot. You struggle a lot. And the bad thing with this, we combine two things. We, we combine God and other gods. We combine God with the other gods. And our God is, is so jealous. Our God is so jealous. He doesn't want to be combined with other gods. And if you give him chance to live in your life alone, everything will be simple for you. Hallelujah. Amen. How much do you love? Do you love, do you love your, your friends? Do you love your enemies? Do you love those who do wrong to you? Do you love those who laugh at you during troubles? Do you love those who see you struggling and they laugh? Let me tell you something. And as I'm concluding. Hey, now, we live on this planet once. Everybody knows that. We live on this planet once. Never allow your life to be miserable. Never live a miserable life. Be happy. In everything, pray. Seek 
God as much as possible. Do good to others. Forget all the past and look for the for the good. It is very bad to live with hatred in your heart. If you've never experienced that, ask me. You get old before the age of getting old. You die premature death. You cannot enjoy anything when you live the hatred life. Amen? Amen. Forgive all those who did wrong to you. And move on. You did not do them. You did not do that wrong thing because you wanted. You did not, they did not do that to hurt you. But because the enemy know the values in you, that's why he wants to fluctuate you, wants to put you in that category, he wants to see you crying, and the hell celebrates. May God richly bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Pastor Daniel, for that powerful word. Amen. We need God to carry on. We need God to conquer the world. We need God to live out of fear. We need God every single day. Without him, we can't manage anything. Without him, we can't even wake up. Without God, we can't even move a finger. But with him, everything is possible. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we are going to go into another session, which is a very good one. Into a session of giving. We are going to give in the house of the Lord. For those with their tithes, offerings, pledges, put them in the envelopes. We're going to collect them. Hallelujah.
us hold our offerings in our hands and let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, such a wonderful day you have given us today. today. Father, thank you for carrying us through this week and the month. As we begin a new week and a new month, Lord, we ask for your protection, provision, salvation, redemption, forgiveness, mercy and grace to carry us through. Father, protect our families. Protect us as we go to work. Protect us as we come home. Protect us, Lord, from every evil. Father, we thank you for the offering we have brought in today. For you have given us through the week. And out of what you have given us, we have brought to you, Lord. May it be a sacrifice that is going to help us carry on. May it be, Lord, a sacrifice that is going to touch your heart. And then you open up the holes of heavens and grant us with your offering, you with your peace. Father, grant us the peace we deserve or we desire. Grant us with the health that we desire. Grant us with the love from you, Lord. Give us the, give us the chance and the opportunity to love one another as you love us, Lord. Father, we need you. We need you in our homes. We need you at work. We need you in our churches. Now, Father, in our country, Uganda, as they have lifted up the lockdown, may the churches be opened to you, Lord. May the gatherings go back to the churches, Lord. May you strengthen us, strengthen us, Lord, because we all need your strength. We give you glory and honor, Lord. We praise you, we worship you, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Okay. 
table. Uh, today, if you've heard uh, the word of God, it was so powerful and encouraging that in, if you if you are going through any hardship, you should lean to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not call friends. You know I'm suffering. You know I'm going through hard time. You know just call God. Friends will laugh at you. Hallelujah. But Jesus will never do that. And he will never tell anybody else. Uh, no. <laughs> Hallelujah. So um, there's nothing difficult to God. And we want to thank God um, we are locked down back home. Yeah, we are locked down, isn't it? But from yesterday, I think, yeah, they unlocked us now. We are, we are, it's open, yeah. Society is telling me it's open. Yes, it's open. Hallelujah. They have not unlocked us, but it's open. <laughs> Tuesday. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Nothing is too hard before God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Even this corona will die in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And let us close the service now. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Surely his blessed and mercy shall fall us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord now and forevermore. Amen and amen. May God bless you so much. Love you dearly. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.